Hey there, Lost in Space fans. We are back for the second season of Netflix hit show, We Once Were Lost, But Now We're Found. Stick around. Merry Christmas. We're about to get wrecked. And by that, I mean shipwrecked. Stay tuned. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the After Buzz TV Lost in Space After Show. Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. Finally. <laughs> finally. Finally. Been We've been a minute. waiting. Yes through all of time and now space <laughs> is ours to reclaim. Oh, thank God. Oh, we are talking about Lost in Space Season 2, Episode 1, Shipwrecked. I'm your host, Elena Jordan, and joining me today, very excited, James Maple. Hiya! Brand new After Buzz host. This is his first show, too. Yeah. Oh, Super my excited. Yes. Thank you, thank you for the welcome. Sci-fi fanatic. Yes. You even have an E.T. tattoo. Right here. Permanent member of the uh, inner ET crew right here, so I'll be with you forever. And the Alpha oh, Centauri, Alpha Centauri is part, part of, of the my tattoo as well. Stay tuned, I may show it to you okay. later on. Oh, so we'll see, see, this makes me happy. If we're ever on a spaceship, you or our Maureen, yeah. I can just be like, you are the, you are the space maps. <laughs> yeah. Show us your back. Just show my back. <laughs> so, yeah. James always got her back yeah. with his back. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us, Allison, uh, Allison, Alice I Ford, Alice Ford. <laughs> I love, love, love hosting with Alice. So I'm so I know. excited. It's good that to be you back with you and all of you yes. as well. And I'm excited to talk about Lost in Space. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And right out the gate, Taylor Gates. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back for season two. So excited. We've got more down. Debbie. We've so got more much. robots. We've got oceans now. We have everything. Truly, there's everything. Mm -hmm. Spaceships and sea ships. Yeah. Yes. yes. All the ships. It's Excellent all the ships point. and hopefully some relationships. We'll see. Ooh. We'll see. Oh, look at that. <laughs> but yeah, we'll be talking about all of it, so be sure to stay tuned for our whole episode because also at the end we have a special segment where we will be crowning the captain of the ship who we think is our MVP of the episode and who we think is our this week's space waste. <laughs> Sad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but without any further ado, let's dive right into it. What did you guys think? Overall thoughts of the episode? I really liked this season premiere. I think that we're already getting a lot more character development from everyone, and everyone's kind of grown and matured because we have that seven month um, time jump. And yeah. so I'm really excited to see kind of how everyone's starting to grow up a little bit. I can see everyone starting to mature a little. I loved that it was a Christmas episode. Yeah. So. There's so, and there's so much, like, tie-ins to other space movies in the show, which was really cool. But, yeah, I loved the character development. We kind of see everyone's relationships um, growing up. Will's getting a little bit older, mm -hmm. and, you know, we've got a lot of, like, angsty teenager and Penny. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited to see where everyone goes. Yeah. I dig that, too. The character development has been incredible uh, with these the first episode so far. It's cool to see, you know, them. they were kids the first season, and they are still kids now, but they've kind of grown up a little bit, and they're taking on a bit more responsibility as not only family members but crew members. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to see that development for the characters as well. So, I love that, too. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned, too, that this is a holiday episode, mm -hmm. since we're here for the holidays That's as right. well. Um, so kicking off the episode, we find out where they've been in this, this seven-month kind of hi hiatus that we've not seen. They've uh, created this greenhouse that they have and there's this bioluminescent algae that's very reminiscent of our robot's face um, yes. that is then collected so that they can celebrate for Christmas. And I love the line that it's easier to get that space algae than getting a tree from Burbank. <laughs> yeah, I love all the California references good, they, always, right? they always drop in there. I love it, I love it. James, stand a little closer to me. I want to be closer to you. <laughs> um, and then we also have this, I mean, what did you guys think of this exchanging of gifts? Like with Will being gifted the key to the chariot, even though as Penny points out, she's like, you really didn't need that yeah, as a gift. Sorry. Like, we already have that. <laughs> um, and then the book, The Lost in Space uh, book. I love that. Yeah. I love the book because it's the first time we actually see like, the title of the show mm -hmm. and like their lives and I mean getting to relive kind of season one through that kind of intro I yeah. think that was like their way yeah. of giving us a recap because there wasn't a recap in the beginning 
And I was like, wait, what happened in season one? And then I was like, oh, yeah. Now we have, like, that little recap. So that was kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know what everyone else got. I mean, other than... I know. I was like, like, two people got gifts. I thought that the, the, the gifting of the, the key was, like, a big, like, like becoming a man moment totally. for Will. Yeah. You know? Like, I feel like that's, like, your first time being, like, okay, I'm a big boy now. Or a big girl. I have a car. So I thought that was a cool moment for him to be like, okay, I'm an official member of the team now with, like, a little responsibility. So. And I also really like, because I just rewatched season one, um, like, this past week and it was cool because I remember in like the first episode I think of the whole show they had that gift exchange flashback where um, Judy they're like Skyping with um, John and Judy has the cookies for them and so it's cool to see like the passage of time and how much has changed through the lens of this holiday that they kind of brought back up but I thought that was really cool kind of callback Mm -hmm. to the pilot of the show. I love that I love that parallel too that you discovered and kind of pointed out there because when they they have these little callbacks and references it's always nice. It's a lot of fun. Especially when it's done well. And And I felt like this one this one was done well. I also like that they didn't harp too much on it especially a lot of shows that come out like Christmas Eve Mm -hmm. are like this is our Christmas special like (laughs) focus on the Christmas of it and it's like no 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 that's just the time period that we're starting this out in. But now we're diving into the meat. It's not a Christmas series. Yeah. (laughs) And we're getting the the actual plan. Like, what are we going to do from this point forward? Um, And the issue is that the atmosphere is toxic. It burns them. So even with their... Like corn things, they're like what they're they're plants that they have grown, mm-hmm. and I love that he's like the potassium levels are okay. And I was like, that's oxygen and potassium, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Nerd jokes. Uh, <laughs> okay, periodic table. I like oh it. Good. Good. It's good. If you don't laugh, I'm gonna explain it until you do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we see Maureen's plan. Mm-hmm. At this point, they're like, okay. Everything is really, really toxic here. The breach that lets in all the air is like, okay, this is this is monumental. We cannot stay here. Mm-hmm. We're trying to, you know, keep it as as we can. But Marina's seeing there's going to be issues. And at this point, I feel like everybody should just shut up and listen to her anyway because she's always right. And she sees that totally. there's yeah that the, we have these thunderstorms that occur the exact same time down to the minute they can predict them exactly she thinks that she can utilize that energy to recharge the ship and start it up while john is like we don't need to do this like we don't need to go out looking for what could be better when it could be worse basically we need to appreciate what we have what were your thoughts at this point were you guys like team marine like let's get off this damn place or planet or were you like john like okay maybe we shouldn't be rocking the boat too much I feel like I was sort of Team John at first because I was like, I don't want to go back out. We have our little plants. Like, we have our little society. Like, we can live here. Like, it's difficult and there are challenges, but we can live here. But then when Maureen made her whole speech about, like, our kids are never going to have friends. They're never going to fall in love. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of actual life is this? Like, we're surviving, but are we actually living? And so I was like, oh, she's got a point. We got to get off this little, you got to get off this little Mm -hmm. land. Yeah, she brought up a lot of things where you were like, oh, that, yeah, that's sad. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. should leave. And then also, they're like basically on a sandbar that wasn't very wide. And I was like, um, what if the tide changes ever? Like a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. I mean, before we knew the ship could float, it was like, um, into the sea you go. Bye. Right, right. Lost at sea. Right. Yeah, am I right? Lost at sea. Hey! <laughs> spin little spin-off. spin-off action. <laughs> I'm with, I really say that. I'm with Taylor on this. I was Team John in the very, very beginning. And then there was a moment where Maureen said, uh, she was something to the effect of, like, our kids will never have what we have. Yeah. And that was like, damn, she's right. Women are smarter than men. She's right. <laughs> Time to go. This is why we like having you on this That's panel. Right. I try. Yeah. I try. I'm not going to We'll keep you. We'll keep you. But yeah, so this this whole plan seems like a good idea, but it is very risky. So I understand, you know, John's predicament, but mm-hmm. then everything changes because the breach that they've been able to kind of secure... This one's way too big. Way too big a breach. Mm -hmm. Kills all their plants. Like, they got a GTFO, basically. They're like, what are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? It's going to be very difficult, as they said. But it's pretty much impossible at that point. It's like, what are you going to eat? 
So I love that John comes in with this big heroic moment of, we're leaving. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting off this planet. And the kids are like, wait, that was an option this yeah. whole right. time? We would have gone with that, man. Like, seven months ago. <laughs> like, but I like, too, that he's the one who makes the big announcement, and he's like, all right, Maureen, tell him the plan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, that was her plan from the beginning. What are you talking about? But somebody else who has some plans. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, always up to no good. That mm-hmm. Mrs. Smith, Dr. Smith. It's Rascal like... Smith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dr. Rascal. She's always... De- yeah, so what did you guys think? Like, I mean, this was kind of the, the big reveal at the end of the episode that this entire thing was kind of brought to fruition because Dr. Smith ripped the patch off. She actually had the ability to get in and out right. this whole time. I mean, were you guys anticipating that at all? No. No. Uh-uh. Gotcha. No, but that she has a criminal for mastermind, Luke. for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's so manipulative and good at being manipulative, and she just, like, gets it under everyone's skin, mm-hmm. they don't even realize that she's, like, playing all of them. Yeah. I feel like that's the one word I wrote in my notes over and over again was manipulative. She's like a, she's like a mastermind. I feel like she's totally. planting little seeds in everyone's head mm-hmm. and trying to steer them the way she wants for, for you know, further corruption. So it's interesting to see her develop into, like, a deeper criminal that we already knew, or knew her to be, so. Yeah. yeah. I think we're definitely setting up a giant showdown between her and Maureen. Oh, like, there's yeah. just no way we're not. I've wanted it. Yeah. I've, me too. I've wanted it. Yeah. I'm here Since for season it. one, I'm like, oh, yeah. the battle of the masterminds. Yeah. Like, who will be triumphant, good or... I don't want to say evil, but it's just kind of like selfishness versus mm-hmm. selflessness. Oh, she's evil. I thought she was evil. She's like, nah, she's like let's not even try to stop. Nah, I see evil. She evil. She's evil. She's evil. <laughs> I think we're definitely going to see that Shank again, too. Oh, yeah. Because I kept writing that down. I was like, Shank, Shank, <laughs> Shank. <laughs> I love that her notes are just like, Shank, bioluminescence. And people are like, what? Why, why are you watching? <laughs> Relax. <laughs> But, I, hey, in the words of the brilliant Maureen herself, you don't have to understand a tool to use it. So yeah, I nice. love that quote. Boom. Mm-hmm. Boom. Uh, not sure that's completely relevant, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's a life lesson. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Dr. Smith is really trying to infiltrate. She starts getting, we see her kind of breaking down some manipulation tactics with Penny. Yeah. Early on when Penny's bringing the food in and she's just kind of like, oh, here's little undercutty things. Yeah. And we know that she was able to kind of get underneath Penny's skin last season, too. So, uh, this whole dynamic just makes me feel uncomfortable. Totally. Yeah. I think it yeah. makes total sense, though, because I think that Penny, in a way, is sort of... I don't want to say the black sheep of the family, but she... Her mind just works differently mm-hmm. than yeah. that of, like, yeah. her parents and her siblings. And so I think she's kind of the most vulnerable to find someone who really does understand her mm-hmm. and kind of can relate to her. So I think it makes total sense that, you know, you know, Dr. Smith is planting things in everyone's heads, but I think it makes the most sense that she's going the hardest towards Penny. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because she's yeah. going for whoever feels excluded. Right. Yeah. Because she feels like she can kind of pick them off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the only good thing is, is, I mean, she may be crazy, but she knows how to sail. She does. So. She does. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Did you guys think she was lying? Absolutely. Like I said, she's evil. <laughs> <laughs> like, I did not think that she was going to be able to pull through. I knew that she had, like, let, like a shank hidden somewhere. Or she had some type of, like, little ploy that she was working on when she threw up the idea about sailing. I was like, I don't trust this lady. Something's up with her. I mean, I think she wanted to get off the, you know, where, whatever the planet they are on, you know. Mm-hmm. And so whatever she can do to make sure they get off, I kind of think she knew how to sail, but. Yeah, because yeah, she's all about her own self-interest. And totally. she yeah. wouldn't, you know, be like, oh, let me take the reins if she thought that she was going right, to crash right. the ship. Yeah. Or unless she had, like, a backup plan, which I don't know how you would. Yeah, it's like, in, what would you even do? In the corner of that situation. Yeah. yeah, it's like, can you can't just... even breathe the air yeah. on this planet, yeah. right. so. Just yeah. make a U-turn, that's all. <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> yeet yourself over. <laughs> yeet. yeet. Um, I did love, however, though, that with, you know, the iconic line from Lost in Space, danger, danger, mm-hmm. Will Robinson, the only time that we see it this episode is right above the window right. that she's looking out. Mm-hmm. So it's when she's the most in control when she's like, no, 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 tell them that they, they need to drop the sails. Like, we, this is, we got to stop. Like, yeah. we're going to, you it's know. It's about to go down. But we see that this is kind of the impetus of, like, something dangerous mm-hmm. is going to happen. Yeah. This is going to be her exit, her way out. So I did like that little danger sign. I would like to assume that it was on purpose. <laughs> I think I would imagine yeah, that would have yeah, to yeah. be intentional. Yeah. Um, but I did think that that was kind of a, a cool little element they threw in. 
And of course, in traditional Lost in Space style, there has to be a big, giant, catastrophic event that everybody has to focus their attention on. Clatacism. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, so this giant storm is happening. They're heading right for the island chain that they were trying to avoid the whole time. Uh, and Smith has the idea, look, we're not going to go around it. We can't. We have to go through it. Did you guys think they were going to wreck? Yeah. Totally. It's, it's called right. shipwreck. It's, right. yeah. it's called shipwreck. Yeah. I was like, this is when they wreck. This is a shipwreck. Yeah. <laughs> It was a psych out. Yeah, yeah they totally yeah. were going to crash, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't trust them. I didn't trust them. Well, also, like, yeah, let's pick up speed to go through these yeah. jagged, like, small, teeny, tiny, narrow areas. Let's just go right on through it. I thought that's that was a little strange of an idea. That's what yeah. I always do when I'm about to, like, yeah. get into a tight spot. I'm like, just go just, for it. Just... Step on the gas. <laughs> They always say that you're supposed to like slow down on turns. I always speed up. Oh, so yeah. I was like, I <laughs> guess that's the same thing. It's the same mentality. Yeah, it's right? like, look, if we're going to hit these rocks, we're going to hit them hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I should not be in charge of any <laughs> sort of vessel in any way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, speaking of being in charge, I love that line too when Will is talking to his dad in the infirmary about like his mom, and he's like, Mom's not in charge anymore. Yeah. It's like, and it's oh. this like, dun dun dun. So right. ominous. Right and he they, says nothing in response. I know, mm. right? But it's like, what do you even say to that? Like, what do you say to that? I don't know. Yeah. But I, ultimately, I thought this was a really, really solid first episode. It set up, I think, really well this dynamic, especially between Smith and Maureen, when they even have this whole thing yeah. when Smith confesses. And she's like, look, mm-hmm. I was the bad guy so that you didn't have to be. Yeah. So it's almost this idea of people accepting the roles that they're given. You know, like yeah. she's been given this role of outlier, of bad guy. So she's like, well, then I'm just going to own it. Mm. Makes me kind of love her. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. like a fun villain. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. definitely, you know, love to hate. Yeah. Ugh, somebody you could definitely waterfall for. Hey! hey. 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 Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the episode ends with this giant waterfall that you're like, no, yeah. they're finally safe and they're going to go over a waterfall. And we're all freaking out, like, mom and dad are just holding on. Yeah. Like, we have limitations to our willing suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Like, they are not, like, this is not going to end well for them. But luckily it stops right on the edge. Right in the nick of time. Oh, yeah, they stop. But then they see that there's some weird metal... Thing. thing in yeah. this like chasm. We don't even know what it is. It's like it's some sort of weird, term. like yeah, thing. it's like this thing. chasm that's just in the center, and there's something like Mosesing this yeah. waterfall. Totally. Mosesing. <laughs> it's it's like part of words. Part of words. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's like was, straight yeah. up. It yeah. was. I was like, okay. So mm-hmm. then we figure out like this is gonna be what the show is gonna be about. Yeah. Yeah. Or what we assume that the show is going to be about. Do you guys have any uh, strong thoughts on any particular scene? Was there anything overall that really stuck out to you that was like, man, this is the moment. I'm in it. I'm ready for the rest of the season. I'm just, I'm really excited about, like, Dr. Smith kind of getting into everyone's heads Mm -hmm. because I feel like that's such a more, it's like such a sophisticated turn, I think, because we obviously saw, like, hints of that in season one, but I feel like it's going to get a little bit darker, a little bit more psychological in season two so I'm just really excited to see how that pans out yeah, and if she's had seven months to yeah. plan yeah, in the yeah. cell it's like because I think she also had a laptop in there in one of the scenes they like showed her working on something and then she was like put it under yeah. a blanket Did y'all ever like inspect the room I don't I know right. yeah. yeah it's like a wellness <laughs> check that happens every couple of hours right there's a few things I'm like alright y'all gotta be a little bit better about yeah. this and they're like seven months have passed yeah. we're, we're not it's worried fine. about that yeah it's it's crazy. One of the things that I've noticed is uh, I feel like there's like a, a shift of like matriarchy between Maureen and, and Dr. West. Like, oh. I don't know. I feel like because she's because I feel like there's a weird dynamic between um, a Penny and her mother that like Dr. West is kind of like coming in for the swoop to be like, OK, baby, don't worry. I got mm-hmm. you. I'm like, what is going on over here? What is happening? Driving that wedge yeah. deeper and deeper. Uh-huh. So I feel like there's and then also when she kind of took the reins literally for mm-hmm. the for the ship. She that was a moment too where Maureen wasn't in control. So I feel like there may be like a little paradigm shift of matriarchy. I'm with you. Yeah. With yeah. I agree. 100 percent I do like though that when she had the shank and she had Maureen there, she just used it to cut the rope. Yeah. So that like, was like, oh didn't look like that at the beginning. She's I like, she's like, like, I got she's you. Stab her in the first episode. <laughs> but no, it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, any final thoughts on this before we head into our special segment? Well, I just have to say that for all of you Star Wars fans, you may have noticed that when the sales went up, it looked exactly like the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it did look a lot did. like the Millennium like, Falcon. Mm-hmm. I see. <laughs> made some extra um, little figurines mm-hmm. <laughs> Which made from that. Which may also be a movie that comes out today, but you yeah. know, we're not talking about yeah. it. So. Yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> I also really love that there's so many like science things that are yeah. real, like the bioluminescence. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's so many places around the world that you can actually see that in real life yeah. and yes. there's so many cool things if you're like a science geek that you can pick out that are actually like real things because mm. I, I love it when they do real things that are actually on earth instead of like made up stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm with you Physics. I like it learn it <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <That's> love it <laughs> so we do have a special segment our captain of the ship or space waste so who was this week's captain and who was this week's space waste for so, you? So, you guys, I literally have the same person for both. Whoa! <laughs> because Dr. Smith, like, she steered that ship. I mean, she was a great, great captain this week, but she also just, like, told Maureen, like, oh, here's what I've been doing for the past seven yeah. months. I'm like, girl, keep that to yourself. <laughs> like, you can definitely get a little further in your plans, I feel right. like. So I feel like she made the, the best MVP decision, but it was also just the dumbest at yeah. the same time. It's what every villain does. They're like, and here's my master brain. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Just, just do it. Herself. <laughs> just help herself. I'm going to have to say that Dr. Smith was the captain for sure because mm-hmm. she, like, used all of her evil ways to not only, like, help them out, but also they is, like, set free. Yeah, WTF. <laughs> and so I'm going to have to go with Maureen being space waste because it's like, Ooh. you allowed that to happen. Snap. Oh, what? Hey, literally. Um, my MVP, I, I guess I'm going to have to side with uh, with evil today. Oh. And I go with uh, Dr. Dr. West. You're the real MVP. Yes, yeah. there it is. Wood, wood. Yeah, she she stepped up when I thought she was going to like step down and, and crash the ship. So she came through. And space waste... My girl Penny, you're just like oh. you're just walking emotions right now. My like, girl, like, what do you want? Like, do something. So I'm, just, I want her to to, to develop into uh, a, a greater a greater force for the for the for the team. I'm here for yeah. it. Yeah. Here yeah. For it. Stone cold. Yeah. Oh. Right. Sometimes you gotta side with evil. Yeah. I like it. I th- I'm gonna go with you guys. I think uh, Captain is Doctor Smith. Yeah. This is definitely the time that she literally was the captain of the ship. Space waste though. I gotta go with Will. Oh, because <laughs> this is the thing. Very sweet gift that you, you know, published your sister's work, but you basically stole her diary and then published That's it so and gave it out to everybody. Sure. Kind of not a cool move, little Will. Absolutely. Just saying, just saying. Mm-hmm. And also, like, you need to figure out if you're going to drive super slow or so fast that you crash a chair. Like, one or the other. Uh, even though I can't say anything, the first time I drove, I drove directly into my parents' house thinking I was in reverse. So I was like, I'm with you, Will. I'm Whoa. also space waste. So... There you go. (laughs) Lost in Space, season two, episode one. Be sure to stay tuned, too, because we're going to be talking about all of these amazing episodes. And in the meantime, we're going to keep up with you. Yes, you guys can find me on Twitter at Elphaba underscore Anne and on Instagram at Taylor underscore Gates underscore. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Alice L. Ford or on Instagram at Alice's Adventures on Earth. And I'm on Instagram at Terrell James Maple. And I'm Elena Jordan. You can find me on Twitter at Elena Jordan because I'm not that creative. And <laughs> at Instagram at Elena J. Jordan. And if you like space and you like the idea of people being lost in space, I uh, also play Sophia in the Relativity podcast, the scripted podcast about the last spaceship on Earth. So Ooh, check it out, cool. relativitypodcast.com. And be sure to stay tuned here to AfterBuzz TV for all of your favorite after shows. Until next time. Bye. Peace. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. 